Hello, everyone. Today we discuss a important concept in pricing: customer lifetime value. It is particularly relevant to subscription-based business models. First, let me ask you a question: What do the following have in common? Microsoft Office 365, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, Zoom, Gym membership, and Spotify. It is perhaps not difficult to realize that all these services have a subscription-based business model. So their revenue stream comes from the subscription fee collected from the subscribers. Subscription-based business model is particularly popular nowadays among services. And software companies. You may ask why. One of the key differences between transaction-based businesses and subscription-based businesses is that subscriptions allow businesses to collect a stream of revenue at a steady rate. As a result, the money collected from subscribers is much more predictable than the money collected. From transactions, so it reduces the uncertainty of revenue stream. As a result, it has become very popular among software and video streaming services nowadays. So here is how we define and calculate the customer lifetime value, or CLV. A customer lifetime value is the profitability of a customer over the entire life of the relationship. A customer may live 120 years, but a customer may only be with your business for three years. So three years is what matters. And in a subscription-based business model, the profit is calculated as the sum of the profits over time. In a transaction-based business model, the CLV is calculated as the profit from all the transactions. As you can tell, the difference between the two is the time-based revenue stream tend to be far more predictable. When calculating CLV, there are three key elements. One is sure money is better than uncertain money. Second is money now is better than money in the future, and the third is more money is better than less money. What do we mean? First, money now is better than money in the future. Please pay attention to the table on the right. So let's say you have ten dollars now, and the interest rate is ten percent. So ten dollars after one year will give you eleven dollars. That is, money has time value, and over time the money grows. At a compounding rate, so each time it grows by ten percent. At the end of the sixth year, ten dollars has become seventeen point seven dollars.、Uh, what this means is the fee collected from the future should be discounted when we calculate CLV now. So more specifically, at a ten percent annual interest rate, ten dollars now is worth. Seventeen point seven dollars six years later. If we discount that back, that is ten dollars six years later, is only worth five point seven dollar now. So money now is better than money in the future. The second element of CLV is certain money is better than uncertain money. Customers. Leave. That is the term is churn. So a lifetime value must factor in how long customers stay. So the way we consider customer churn is very similar to the way we consider interest rates. Let's say a customer now pays you ten dollars a month in subscription fee. One year later. There is a ninety percent chance that the customer would stay with you, and ten percent chance that the customer would churn. So, one year later, the subscription fee is expected to be 
only nine dollars because there's a ten percent chance that the customer will no longer be with us. If you continue this calculation, you'll find out that the customer now is only worth four point three dollars six years later because there is a good chance that the customer will be no longer with us by that time. That is, a $10 customer now, a certain customer, is only 43% likely to be still with us six years later. And the third element of CLV is more money is better than less money. This dictates three business strategies. In order to increase the company's revenue, expanding the business, you can grow the customer base, you can increase the subscription fee per customer, or as we have discussed extensively in this course, you can offer multiple tier fee structure through segmentation, offering different prices to different types of subscribers. So on the technical side, uh, I want to go through the formula for calculating CLV. Let's say we have a video streaming service that charges $13 a month for subscription, deducting costs resulting in $10 contribution per month. On average, 2% of the customers drop out each month. So that is a monthly churn rate of 2%. So the CLV, considering churn alone, would be the $10 contribution plus the $10 subscription factoring in the monthly churn in the first month, second month, third month, etc. So that has only one component in the CLV calculation. The second component is now is better than the future. We must discount future cash for present value. Assume a monthly interest rate of 1%. We are going to discount the future value of each month using the monthly interest rate. The calculation is similar. The only part that we've added to the calculation is the churn rate now is divided by 1 plus the interest rate. And this interest rate discount will compound monthly. This goes on and on and on. Mathematically, this is actually a geometric series. The formula has a fairly short calculation as I have formulated here. And uh, I've added a second component of CLV to deduct the costs related to acquiring, servicing, or returning the customer. And if we substitute the three numbers we have, a monthly churn rate of 2%, an interest rate of 1%, and a monthly contribution of $10. Using this formula, we can easily calculate that the CLV in this case is $337 deducting costs. Now this calculation, although accurate, is technically less tractable. There is indeed a simpler way to calculate CLV on a average basis. A video streaming service charges $13 for monthly subscription. Deducting variable costs results in $10 contribution per month per subscriber. And the average length of subscription is 36 months. Instead of worrying about aggregating the lifetime value over an infinite number of months, we just use the average length of subscription, 36 months. So then the CLV for an average customer is simply $10 times 36. That gives you $360 minus costs. A direct application of CLV is to evaluate a company's marketing program, how cost effective it is. So here's an example. The video streaming company provides a one month free trial Running the free trial ads costs $300 per customer. And the free trial itself costs $3 per customer. Is the free trial worth offering? As we have calculated that 
the CLV is $360. That is larger than $300 plus $3. So it is worthwhile. Now, the scenario can change if, for example, the company's churn rate increases. If more subscribers start to drop out of the subscription-based service, then the CLV would drop. It will make the CLV lower to the point that a $303 acquisition cost may no longer be worth it. So that's a direct application of CLV. That's our discussion on CLV. Thank you. We'll see you next time.